the general recommendation today from a variety of, of uh, expert groups um, would be somewhere between the age of 35 and 45. Um, and obviously, um, the later the better from the, from the perspective of the um, um, issues of surgical menopause, which is um, uh, certainly not an insignificant uh, concern, both from the perspective of uh, the loss of estrogen for a woman, um, as I said, heart disease, um, risk of heart problems, the risk of osteoporosis, but also from the um, uh, both the, the psychosocial, in fact, uh, vaginal dryness, a variety of issues that are that are very significant or potentially very significant. They they should not be downplayed, um, and so somewhere between 35 and 45. The other um, important to point point to point out is that. There's increasing evidence now that the that uh, BRCA1 mutations and BRCA2 mutations are um, are really quite different, both in terms of the lifetime risk uh, of cancer, but in, in in the case of the question I was asked, timing. When those cancers seem to appear, and there's uh, um, pretty good evidence that uh, although BRCA2 mutations do increase the risk of ovarian cancer. Um, before the age of 50, it's very uncommon. In fact, the percentage of uh, cases is, uh, of, of BRCA2 mutations leading to ovarian cancer is, before the age of 50 is probably 1% or less. Whereas uh, at age 50, um, it might be 10%. Uh, women with BRCA1 muta uh, BRCA mutations, may 10% uh, of them may have developed ovarian cancer by the age of 50. Therefore, it's, again, not unreasonable to suggest that a woman with a known BRCA1 mutation 35 is a, is a reasonable time to talk about performance of that procedure. And for a woman with a BRCA2 abnormality mutation, perhaps uh, 45 is not a, an unreasonable recommendation. Obviously, um, I'm not giving medical advice. I'm certainly not uh, saying that I know the individual patient. But those are reasonable considerations for the, for the woman, uh, her family, of course, her advisors and, of course, her doctors who are advising her.